When you're pilot monitoring, you are the safety pilot. You are there watching everything as a second pair of eyes. No matter what, the aircraft has to stay safe. It doesn't matter who keeps it safe. Most pilots don't understand what career opportunities are available in the world of aviation. They're making career decisions based on advice from friends or posts on internet forums. Meaning they are taking huge risks with their livelihood without having all the details. This podcast was created to help you understand the aviation industry so you can find your dream job. Let's get ready for pushback. Here's your host and my dad, Nick Fialka. Hey, pilot. Welcome to Ready for Pushback. It's a solo show. It's Nick Fialka. We are here together and you are joining me and I'm stoked that you are. Thank you for being part of my team. It's great to be part of a team, isn't it? And that's what we're going to talk about today is team. And before I get into it, I have been sitting around all day long, all day, writing out the things I want to talk about for solo shows. I've got a big list and I'm trying to grow that list. So if you have any insight, if you want to hear a show about something, send me an email, uh, podcast at spitfireelite.com. Lots of people send emails. I do. I really appreciate it. And I'll respond and I'll write you back. I'll think about putting your show on and be super fun. And that was what I was doing today. I worked on six different episodes because what I try to do is pre-record them and bank them and have them ready to rock. And That way I'm not under stress of running out of episodes. (laughs) And so whenever my editing team tells me, hey, you got about three or four episodes left, that is when I go ahead and jump on and start recording. And it's a big effort. Anna has to take the kids and uh, she's very gracious and helps me with that. And that's what I did today. I went through and thought of a bunch of cool stuff that I'm going to be sharing over the next few months, I guess. Yeah. But While I was doing that, my phone rang from a dear friend of mine. And this guy, I've known him for a long time. We actually deployed together back in 2019. He is a military pilot. He is a pilot at a major airline, at an amazing major airline. And he flies a wide body aircraft as a first officer. And he was kind of a little upset when he called. He was in a little bit of distress and called me and wanted to talk. And I want to tell you the story about what we talked about because it went nowhere where I thought it was going to. He and I were texting. I had this flight to Milwaukee and it was trash weather. And we got done and just exhausted from being beat up by turbulence and having to do all the things and avoid avoid storms. And then there was icing. The list just continues. I had chatted with him to vent. And he at the same time was flying over the Great Lakes area, much, much higher than I was. And he was cruising along at 38,000 feet in his big wide body aircraft. And they were flying at 0.81, which is pretty fast, you know, about 10 knots below the barber pole, below the max airspeed. And they started to encounter some unexpected not severe, but definitely moderate turbulence. And as they were flying, this unexpected turbulence really affected the airspeed of the aircraft such that it jolted forward and the airspeed bumped up real fast and right up to the barber pole. And as my friend was sitting there as pilot monitoring, he saw that while the captain was looking down reading a book. And the bump happened immediately as he notices that airspeed just blasting up to the barber pole. He grabs the throttles and pulls them back so that they can stay within the required airspeed and not overspeed this aircraft. Oof. Man, it was a very unexpected thing, and he basically saved the aircraft from breaking its limit, and that's an awesome thing. Fast forward a few minutes, and the flight attendant was talking to the captain about the unexpected turbulence and talking about whether there would be more. And the same thing happens again. They hit a big bump of turbulence. The airspeed jolts forward. He grabs the throttles, pulls them back, keeps the airspeed under control, and the captain looks at him and said, don't touch my aircraft. I'm the pilot flying. You're the pilot monitoring. 
monitor, do not touch my airspeed. And that blew me away. And so the reason he was calling me is because he was pretty upset because he wanted a second opinion about what was happening and whether he did something wrong and whether he should or should not have done this before. And I just was, I couldn't believe it, right? The first thing is when you are flying, when you are flying fast and you're flying high, you expect to have pretty smooth air. If you encounter unstable air and you have the possibility of turbulence, you dial that speed back a little bit so that if you do have big variations in airspeed, that you're not overspeeding the airplane or stalling the airplane on the other side, right? Especially when you're like 39, 40,000 feet, things can happen quick and the air is so thin, you don't have a whole lot of time to react. And so he was beside himself because like, I'm just trying to do a good job. And this guy like snapped at me and just jumped down my throat. What should I have done? Should I have handled this differently? And I'll tell you folks, a lot of you listening are not yet at your airline. A lot of you are working your way through the process and you may or may not be of the understanding of what pilot flying and pilot monitoring are. And so I just want to break that down real quick. It's exactly what it sounds, right? You have two pilots sitting next to one another and you basically rotate at legs where, hey, this leg is my leg. I'm going to fly it and I'll control the aircraft. I'll manage the FMS. I'll do all the climb and the approach and the landing and the takeoff and all the things. And when you're pilot monitoring, you are the safety pilot, right? Safety pilot. You are there watching everything as a second pair of eyes. You're also running the radios. You're making all the calls to ATC and this and that. You're making sure that all the things that the pilot flying are correct, but also backing that person up. And it's part of crew resource management. It's part of CRM. It's part of what makes us good at our job is the fact that there are two pilots instead of one pilot. And that second set of eyes really helps manage all of the threats and find those errors and correct the aircraft back to where it was so that you can be in a good spot, right? Where everything can be thumbs up and everybody can be high five and I'll tell you guys, if you see something wrong with a plane, if you're going to bust an altitude or if you're going to get have a tail strike on landing or something like that, it's incumbent upon you as the pilot monitoring to make sure that doesn't happen. If you can help that, if you need to touch the controls or whatever, just do it. Don't hesitate. Save the aircraft. If you need to call a go around, if they're bungling it up, if they're getting too slow, if they're getting too fast, if you've got wind shear, whatever it is, it is incumbent upon the pilot monitoring to make sure that the aircraft is safe. And I just need to talk a second to this captain because I will tell you what, nothing makes me more upset than some guy that's a douchebag to their first officer. That guy was trying to keep the captain safe and the captain was not paying attention and not doing his job. And yeah, we all get distracted and all those things, but by God, freaking work together. Realize that this is not your aircraft. You may sign for it. You may be the pilot at controls. You may be the pilot flying, but it's not your aircraft. It's both of your aircraft. And you both, if you both crash this plane, then you are both responsible. If you both do a great job, you're both going to get recognition for it. I need you to know that because God just gets me going, y'all. Just gets me going. So why do I say all of this? Because I want you to know, especially if you are a person that has not had the benefit of being a pilot in a big crew for a long period of time, if you've just kind of come up into some in the flight school world and heard the things from regional airlines and part 135 carriers and this, that, and the other about, hey, you do this, I do that, you do this, I do that. But you seldom talk about what do we do together? Because what you do together is keep the plane safe. And that's what I want you to remember. And so let's think about the rest of this story because my friend calls me, he asks me, what would I do? And I said, bro, if you did that to me, 
I would buy you dinner, dude. I'd do more than like, I would buy, I would raise you up. I would lift you up and celebrate you keeping us alive, keeping us safe, keeping the aircraft within its limits. That is such a freaking important thing. And the fact that he could not see that, he couldn't look beyond his own pride. That is shameful. And listen, it is a great thing to be a pilot. It is a very cool job. People really look up to it, but you need to know that if you are prideful and boastful, you're not going to have any friends. You're not going to have any coworkers that want to hang out with you and people aren't going to want to fly with you. And so what did I tell my buddy to do? I told him this. I said, first off, I would call professional standards at the union and I would have a conversation with them about this situation and get their feedback on it as well. And those of you that listen, you know what professional standards is, but for those of you that are new... Let me just tell you about professional standards. The union has a committee called the Professional Standards Committee. It's full of volunteers that work on conflict management with other pilots. When two pilots have an issue together, they work to manage it just between the pilots. That way, the company doesn't have to get involved. Once the company starts getting involved, then they have to do things like have some kind of retribution, have some kind of punishment for not working within the confines of what you are supposed to do. So it's a really, really amazing thing that the union puts together. And the people that are part of professional standards, they are all trained in conflict management and they are all stand-up people and they are pilots that want the best for these other two pilots that are having an issue. And so my friend, when he calls and has this conversation, they're going to ask a lot of questions. They're going to engage with him. They're probably going to engage with this captain too. And they're going to try to come up with some kind of resolution. And they're probably going to call this captain and have a come to Jesus with him about the fact that, you know what, this is important that you maintain serum and that you pay attention and that no matter what, the aircraft has to stay safe. It doesn't matter who keeps it safe. Both of you have to keep it safe. So both of you do it together. If he's putting his hands on the controls because it's going to be unsafe, then that's just what it is, y'all. And I'm telling you, that is how you build a good community in your organization. That is how you succeed and people enjoy flying with you is if you are a person that they respect. And once you start going down the rabbit hole of don't touch my controls, you lost all credibility and you lost all respect. And that is tricky folks, because it's so hard to gain that back. And my friend is never going to want to fly with this person again. And he's telling all his friends about the bad experience and it just perpetuates itself. And so don't be part of that and realize the importance of keeping everything safe and keeping crew resource management whole and keeping it positive and keeping it together because it's a two person job. It's not a one person job. And that's just it. And you'll be better off because of it. And you'll be a better pilot. You'll be a more likable person. And you'll just be that person your mom always wanted you to be. So do that, all right? I was just so inspired by this conversation with my friend that I needed to just sit down right away and start recording it. I hope that it was helpful for you. I hope that you are continuing to follow your dreams and follow your path to aviation because I think it's awesome and I think it's valuable and I think you are a great pilot and you're learning a lot. So do me a favor, take this show and share it with somebody. Get somebody else listening to my show. Get somebody here with us. I am so glad that you're here. I hope that you value this information. And guess what? On Monday, we got another interview show. I'll see you then. All right, pilots, that's a wrap on this episode. And I know what you're thinking. You need to make yourself a little bit better. So how do you make yourself a little bit better? You tighten up your resume. So here's what I want you to do. Go over to my website, spitfireelite.com slash podcast, and you can download my free resume template. It is literally my resume that you can download and you can put your own skill sets in. It is tight. It is organized and it's the perfect pilot resume. It's just something I like to do for the pilot group and it is free to you. So go over there, spitfireelite.com slash podcast and download your free resume template. While you're over there, look at all the services that we offer. Lots of great interview prep, 
lots of great application review. Everything you need to be a professional pilot is right there at my website, spitfireelite.com slash podcast. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next episode.